How's everybody doing today? Good, thank you. Well, if everybody familiar with what tree topping is, what about crepe burger? All right. Well, this should be a good review for all of us, but um, it's, unfortunately, it's still very much a big epidemic in our uh, in the tree care society. So, as we look at here, um, okay, which tree do you think looks better? Pretty much, uh, pretty much a no-brainer, and. Uh, you know, we have a tree up to our right here that is its natural form. And uh, what we have to the left is something that is the complete opposite of that. And so I kind of equate it to a really, really bad haircut. So I don't know if anybody knows any 80s action heroes or anything else like that, but that's kind of why I look at it when I see tree topping. It's just, is close the top of the tree off without any worry or care whatsoever. And the, the question is why? Why do we top trees? Or why have you seen people top trees before in the past? Um, there's a lot of common reasons that I do here. Uh, I'm actually, if you haven't tell, tell by now, I'm a northerner, I'm from Chicago. Uh, so you don't usually have a, a great topping problem up there, but since I've migrated down here, we continue to see this issue going on. And some of the most common reasons I've heard is uh, scared it might fall over. The tree's gotten too tall, we're worried about the safety of our house or our kids or anything else like that. What's the easiest we could do? We'll just take the top off the tree. Seems simple enough. The tree's too big for the area, encroaching the house or covering things up, can't get enough sunlight to the grass or things of that nature. Your neighbor did it. That's a why I hear all the time, especially as we kind of dive into crepe murder and things like that. Is that continue to see what we would consider to be bad tree care practice next door and because you know my neighbor did it, well that must be the right way to trim trees. Let's go ahead and just take the top off it and, and move on from there. And they're really at the end of the day trying to eliminate a hazard. That's when I talk to homeowners and get phone calls that come to my office and say I want to I want a top of the tree. Generally speaking it's, they're just they're scared of that tree for some reason. Um, but none of those are really the root cause of the issue. And we don't have to be scared of really any of those things if we're properly taking care of our trees. So why shouldn't we top? I've actually brought a piece up here that I'll, I can't really pass around because it's a little big. Uh, but this is kind of a classic example. This is actually a, uh, a crepe myrtle. You can tell at one point in time it's been topped. And you can see kind of right in the center of it right there is not good wood anymore. It's starting to decay right through the middle of the tree. Now, on a, on a crepe myrtle, it's not, you know, I mean, I think it's a big deal because the trees don't get that big. But a piece like this is actually from a, a large maple tree that was at one point in time. I don't know if everybody can see it, but this is where they had made their flat cut before. And so what happens is, is that the tree's natural reaction is that we've just taken away all its food source. It's, it used to be great lambs, and so by cutting all of them off, the tree freaks out, basically. And it needs to produce leaves to produce food for itself, and so it puts out all these sprouts. It's, it's a knee-jerk reaction. The tree's looking to get healthy again. But what happens when we make that type of a cut on a tree is that it prevents the tree's natural ability to heal itself. So you can see this is a cut that was probably made 20 or 30 years ago. And now it has just a big gaping, big gaping hole on it. And so what happens is, especially on our larger trees, is we're scared that the tree was too tall or too big for the area, we'll go ahead and top it. When we make that topping cut, all these sprouts come off. Now we have the case setting right in the middle of it. And instead of having a nice solid tree, we have Sprouts that come, huge sprouts that end up putting weight in it or end up being attached to just a very thin piece of older wood. Now to me, a big tree doesn't scare me so much, but a lot of heavy branches on a, on a basically a, a leaf that has been completely decayed, that scares me more than a large tree that was pruned properly. Uh, so it really does, it, it promotes decay and becomes 
take it what was probably a healthy three years, be capable of living many years and adding thousands of dollars worth of value to your own property and, and, and essentially destroyed it. Um, once again, we're not addressing the root issue you know, with that tree. Um, and frankly, it's unsightly. Uh, as we go back to that first slide that we saw there, you know, a big gorgeous oak tree with a great canopy on there is a much prettier tree than, than that to be quite honest with. In my opinion, I don't know what everybody else thinks, but uh, and really it's expensive. Uh, Believe it or not, the top part of the tree is the most expensive part of the tree to, to remove. So if you're already kind of prepared to eliminate this hazard and you think the tree's too big, well, oh, we'll just take the top out of it. That's the most expensive part. <laughs> that's where all the limbs are, that's where all the roping and rigging and time takes place. And so we really didn't do anything to save money. We didn't do anything to help that tree's cause out. Um, and we just, we didn't do anything effective in the process to handle what really was the root issue. And so this is a picture. Um, uh, unfortunately, there are trees that I go past uh, every day in, in Harrisburg at a restaurant. I wish I would have gotten a before before picture. Uh, these were two gorgeous oak trees. And about late spring, early summer, they decided to top these trees. They built a brand new restaurant and redid it. They were kind of close to the parking lot. Something went from scared them, and so they topped them. So what you can see up is the tree on your far left, that's all that sucker growth. That's that tree's natural response to, hey, you cut all of our leaves off, I need to start producing food. And so what we're seeing is those limbs coming off those sprouts right there. You see the tree to the right, which was trimmed at the exact same time as the other one, and got through that summer heat, it did not respond so well. And then so, picture to the right, taken almost from the exact same angle, a year and a half later, those trees were no more. Those trees, uh, they died, they could no longer produce anything. And so instead of having two trees that would probably be maintained, they, they paid for tree work twice, they lost, those are the only trees that were on their property, and they were really not anything to gain for at this point. Once again, you know, we, we, we ruined basically two gorgeous oak trees. We paid for the work twice, we killed them. And uh, the last part, the lost thousand dollar property value, I think that that kind of gets lost in the shuffle. You know, as, as homeowners, we look at our yard and we see, we want to make sure our grass is green and our bushes are, are nicely trimmed. But the trees are kind of the, the right ahead stepchild, if you will, of the of the landscape. Yes, we want them, we want them to stay beautiful, but we really don't do anything to um, promote their health. At the same time, does anybody know that a mature oak tree could add $10,000 to the value of their property? It's, uh, it's amazing. So they just gave up $20,000 and they paid for it, literally. <clears throat> Once again, we can just kind of see there how that decay starts forming. And, Another just good example is we see new growth coming here with not enough good holding wood that to support any new branch structure coming up. Can you fix the top tree? Not so much, not, especially not for larger ones. It is, uh, most of the time it's just, it's lost all of its ability to produce food and we see it go almost into an instant decline. Now your faster growing trees, you know, maybe your silver maples, your elm trees, they might be able to put out enough sprouts right away to see that food production. Um, but anything that's slow growing is all the trees that we like uh, in our yard, we pretty much just eliminated that process. Um, major decay basically sets in long before we have that tree has any time to close that wound off. When you're when you prune a tree, I don't know if the last speaker talked about it all yet, we make this cut kind of right outside of what we call the branch bark collar. And by doing it there, the tree naturally heals itself. I'm sure you've kind of seen that from pruning trees that kind of donut shape, pull that it's sort of had its textbook, you know, how a tree deals with uh, the removal of lead, closing 
it off, it seals off its, its wounds, and it moves forward. But when we top a tree, we don't give it that opportunity to do that. It simply just cannot form that palace wood and move on with its life. Now, Crave Murder is it's essentially a topic, but it got its own special name because it's so uh, prevalent about here. Um, it's really uh, an epidemic. I don't know if anybody, you know, as they were walking in today, there was some gorgeous looking, mature Crave Myrtle as you walk into the front of the Expo Center. That's what a Crave Myrtle is supposed to look like. It's supposed to be a gorgeous, and it is, it's a gorgeous ornamental tree. It is something that uh, grows very, very well in our area. Um, and what we usually find out is that it's a, uh, it becomes a situation where the tree simply was planted in the wrong place, wrong time, what have you. And so once again, we run into the same issues that I hear this more with crepe murder than I do with, with topping of the trees. So why'd you do that? My neighbors did it. You know, uh, the landscape percentage is okay. I'll excuse all the other landscapers in this room because there's actually phenomenal landscapers in here. But I'm talking about your truck in a truck, your guys who are just rolling down the street looking to make a few extra bucks. Oh, hey, yeah, we can take care of your crepe, you know, your crepes for you. And it's, this is very easy. It is very the, the term of crepe myrtle like this. That is super easy to do. I can do one in about 10 minutes and be on my way. Um, but pretty properly, it takes a little bit longer. Uh, some of the other myths, you know, it makes more flowers. Um, yes and no. Once again, it's kind of that, that reaction to the, uh, the pruning or the cutting. It's going to gonna put out shoots. It's going to try to do anything it can to, to survive. But most of the time then, since we have taken away all of its branch structure, we've created this tree that even doesn't have great flowers. It has no support. And they end up falling over and once now they need to come back in and top it again and start over from scratch. Uh, it leaves, as, as you can see from the earlier pictures, it leaves horrible scars. Uh, and the trees just lack proportion. And it really, you just keep taking a, a nice small tree or a nice shrub and, and essentially destroyed it at this point in time. There was an actual reason why they did this years ago. Um, and they used to harvest these branches. Uh, and it wasn't just for crepes, it was, it was done on many different trees. Um, and that practice was technically called polarity, which is an actual uh, approved process by the International Society of Agriculture. Um, and what they did was is that they used those small limbs, usually those one to two year limbs, to do the harvest yearly, to dry kindling. They used to make rooms, baskets. Um, I found there was an obstruction of windmills, but I thought it was interesting. Um, but there was an actual practice to it. The difference was they did just indiscriminately cut the tops of these trees. These trees are were basically trained from a young age to be able to do this. So on our far right here, you can see what was this typical crate burn. Just, let's just find the right height that we want these trees to be at and make a cut. The picture to the left right there, what you can see is, you can see all those little sprouts. And that picture may be a little bit harder, we'll find a better one here. The party, what we basically have done is allow that tree to build up a callus to prevent that decay from coming. And so that then when those shoots come up every one to two years, it takes a lot longer to do. You literally hand prune each individual stem off that not disturbing that callus, not interrupting the tree's natural response to decay, uh, and using it for that. The style is still very popular in Europe and England, we'll see it in gardens and things like that. Uh, but it's, it's a practice, it's something that takes, takes time to do. Uh, and you can start your flooring process if that's something you want to do or you like that look, but it has to be started at a young age. You are, it's not nearly as, as hard as bonsai, but it's the same thing. You have to, you have to train these trees to get them started going right in the right direction. That's why we only remove branches that are one to two years old, as opposed to ones that are probably 30 years old, 
create this big pocket of the cave. Um, because we're only taking that young growth, it continues to allow that palace to form and allows that tree to remain healthy and stable and, and moving in the right direction. So you can kind of see this is actually uh, flirting right there. And so that big cluster you see is actually a big callus, a big scab that the tree has, has formed over. These trees have been flirted from uh, a young age, if you will, and kind of taken from there. Now, my personal opinion is I, I actually love crepes. We don't get to grow a lot of them where I'm from in Chicago, so coming down here, it's, it was always gorgeous to see them. And for me personally, I think the one on the right just looks a lot better in my yard than the one on the left. I, uh, I still have a hard time fathoming why people like the look of sticks in their yard. And so that's essentially what we've done when we create murders. I want to just take a bunch of sticks and stick them in all the flower the tree. Uh, we can take some flowers to later on if we want to. Who are guilty parties in it? Well, there's, there are plenty of people. Uh, I mentioned before, uh, landscapers, and I, I kind of include landscape designers in that sometimes, although the, they have gotten way better over the years. Whether it's topping, whether it's crepe burger, what usually ends up happening is that we've simply planted the wrong tree in the wrong spot. We didn't expect that tree to get that big 15, 20 years ago. It looked cute when we bought it from the nursery, we'll just put it there and we forget that these things grow over time. Um, and so the very simple solution for us seems to be let's just whack it off and start from scratch. Um, unfortunately, there are still a lot of uninformed barbers um, out there who can't say no. Um, if any one of you were to call me up and, and ask me to look at your trees and say, hey, this is what I want to do, I'm going to tell you no and uh, give you an alternative on how I think the tree should be doing, but at the end of the day, if that's, if that's the look that you're going for, it's something that I'm going to walk away from. It's simply, it goes against my code of ethics as an arborist. It's not good tree care. Uh, but once again, as we, as we call them, our, our chucks in the truck, it's very easy to, to be a, a landscaper or a, a tree care guy. One trip to Home Depot in a trailer can be found in one of them pretty quickly. Um, and they're going to look at the quick buck. And it means, you know, if they're going to charge far less to trim a tree, it's easy to do it. And that's how this epidemic keeps going on. They just keep circling the blocks, knocking on doors, hey, I see you have a great myrtle. Or great myrtle. Let me cut that for you. Let me, let me, let me prove that for you, is what they'll probably say. Um, Unfortunately, I'm going to blame some homeowners and some, some uh, homeowners associations once again just because they've seen it, they're used to that, they're used to that look, um, and they don't know any better. And same with apartment complexes, they just, that's an easy way to maintain them, the landscapers that have been there for years, they'll just keep coming through there and just, and just chop them up. The only pruning that crepe myrtles need, as well as most trees in, in, in general, is a general thinning out of the crown. Now, a lot of times we'll see our, our crepes have five, seven, you know, maybe even four trunks coming out of the ground. And it's real important that we, hopefully, we find the right spot for that tree to begin with. That we take the time to prune that tree from its, from its start. If you like to look at it, it's got five trunks out of there, maybe we select three of them that we're going to keep and let the valve grow into a good, healthy looking tree. Um, that's something that's easily as easy as done as soon as that tree gets into the ground. Uh, you know, depending on the look you're going for, about three to seven trunks is you know, could be appropriate, depending on what the, the tree looks like when you get it and how it you know, moves forward. Uh, and really the fewer the trunks you have, the more is you can appreciate what that what that crepe looks like. As that, that gets older, it's got that beautiful exfoliated bark that's natural to it. The color changes. So by having less trucks in there, trunks in there, you can actually get a real appreciation of how pretty that tree is. Uh, really, and every year, um, you just go inside, there's usually they'll put out some small sucker growths, little twigs that you can use hand turners to. You, you know, create clear of that, and that's 
really about all you need to do. Um, if a tree is young, you can still reach it. You can remove the seed pods if you want to. That is simply an aesthetic thing. Um, some people don't mind it. Some people can't stand to look at those seed pods when they come out. So they don't have to be removed. If you need to fix a tree after it's been murdered, um, you can. Um, but if you happen to be one of those ones that cut yours only a couple feet off the ground, it's probably best to start over. So I have to replant it, cut your losses, and, and move forward from there. If you, uh, it's kind of what we call a round over or a hat rack where it's still got some limbs going on there. It has, you know, it's kind of that rounded shape. There are some things that we can continue to do to uh, make that tree look better as it moves forward. Uh, we kind of put off the knots and keep the trunk clean, uh, bury the height of those branches so that the tree's natural will kind of come out. In the, in the spring, obviously, when the shoots come up, we're going to start selecting carefully which ones we want to keep and which ones we don't want to keep, and then start maintaining those trunks that we decide to keep and slowly start rebuilding our tree. The nice thing about crepes as opposed to topping oak trees or anything else like that is that even big ones are still going to remain relatively small. We're not going to see a 90-foot you know, crepe myrtle in our yard or anything else like that. So if we do see that decay form and set in, you know, on larger trees we're worried about major trunk failures and things like that. Generally speaking, we're not going to have that with our grapes. Um, so that's why it's, you know, we have a little more time to try to help them set it. And that's really about it. Anybody have any questions? There's a, there's a lot of different, uh, right, aphids is a lot of different 
over the counter products, you can get um, you know, seven is an insecticide, but Biasman is, uh, Biasman, excuse me, is a fungicide that should work on that as well. Was there any other questions? Okay, well, thank you so much for your time today.